With so many different types of shampoos out there, how do you know which one is right for your unique curls needs? Well, I'm going to tell you the exact characteristics that you need to understand about your curls in order to select the right shampoo for your curl type. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things for beginners, talking about product ingredients and really helping you problem solve with your curls. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So in my opinion, shampoo is not really going to vary that much based on your hair characteristics. You can pretty much use a variety of different shampoo types. However, there are some things that are helpful to know when picking the right shampoo. Your curl pattern, whether if it's 2C or 3B, that does not matter when it comes to picking the right shampoo and really most of your products. Also, your hair's density doesn't really come into play here. So shampoos typically vary based on a couple of different things that are helpful to understand stand at first. The first one being how strong of the surfactants are that are in that shampoo or how many different types of surfactants. Surfactants are types of ingredients that actually do the hard work. They do the cleansing. Surfactants are found in any type of product that cleans and removes oils and build up and dirt and all that kind of stuff. The moisture content will also vary in shampoos. So some shampoos have more moisturizing ingredients in them, such as those that are more opaque or more white in color, whereas other shampoos are going to be more clear and those typically have less moisturizing ingredients in them. And then they can also vary based on whether or not if they contain protein ingredients or not. These are just a couple of examples and ways that you will find that shampoos differ. That way you can pick and choose what you need. So next let's cover the different types of shampoos and their level of cleansing ability before we dive into the hair's characteristics. So the first type is a co-wash. This is your most mild type of cleansing product. I don't even technically call these shampoo. These are just a very mild cleanser. These typically don't have any lather. If anything, you might feel a little bit of bubbling when you really scrub with them. So an example of that would be the Curl Smith Curl Quenching Conditioning Wash. So this is basically like washing your hair with a conditioner. I don't really recommend co-washes that much. There are a few instances where I do think it's a good idea and I will get into that shortly, but this is your most mild form of cleanser. Next up on the scale of cleansing ability are going to be be your low poos, which is just short for a very low lather type of shampoo or a shampoo that's very, very mild, but does give you a little bit of suds. One of the examples that comes to mind is this one from Bounce Curl. This is the Pure Silk Moisturizing Shampoo. It actually says medium moisture right here on the bottle. And I like how in the description, it actually describes the foaming level of this. It says low to medium foam or suds moisturizing shampoo. You'll notice some words on the label or in the product's description, such as it's gentle or mild, those types of things are gonna tell you that it's super gentle. The next level of shampoo I consider just to be like your classic or your regular shampoo type. So these are types that you would use on a regular basis. For that, I have the AG Balance Apple Cider Vinegar Sulfate Free Shampoo. All of these are sulfate free, by the way. I typically do advise that for naturally curly hair, unless if you're going to be clarifying, which I'll get into that. But this is a great example of just your everyday type of shampoo that you can use fairly frequently. I mean, I don't recommend shampooing every day, but you could use this a couple of times a week and it's not going to dry out your hair. And this usually gives a pretty high lather. Then there's an even stronger type of shampoo and these are usually labeled as a clarifying shampoo. Sometimes you will see them labeled as detox or something like that. So for that, I have the Twist by Wee Dad Hit Reset Light Clarifying Shampoo. This is one of my favorites. It's very affordable on Amazon, which is nice. This even says on here that it's very low moisture, which means it's going to be very very strong. Typically, the more moisturizing ingredients that you have, the less cleansing ability. Sometimes it definitely can differ and we're not chemists here. So we have to think about how there's an entire formulation to consider. So that's why I'm not calling out specific ingredients because there might be different levels of each surfactant or they might work differently when combined with different ingredients. So to keep it simple, just read the label and see that it says clarifying shampoo. So that's going to be something that you use probably just maybe twice a month, three times a month if you do get a ton of buildup, and we'll talk about buildup in a moment, but 
These are your type of shampoos that you use when you need to really remove a lot of buildup. This is not something you use all the time. And the last type of shampoo is called a chelating shampoo, and this is also a form of a clarifying shampoo, but it's specifically designed to remove minerals that are often found in our hard water. Some people have hard water in our home. Actually, the majority of people do. It's really crazy, and it can wreak a lot of havoc on our hair. A lot of our issues can be tied to our water, especially if you've done everything and your curls are just not cooperating, you might need to to remove hard water buildup. So for that, I have the Malibu Undo Goo pH 9 shampoo. This is a very strong shampoo. It's very high on the pH scale, and this is really going to remove those hard water minerals. This is not something you use very often. This is only something you would use maybe once a month, or if you were about to have like color services done to your hair, I always follow up with a deep conditioner. They also have one called the Hard Water Wellness. They have very similar ingredients. This one also removes product buildup, so it's like a two-in-one. It's clarifying for product product buildup and it's chelating for hard water minerals. So that's why I love it and it's fairly affordable too. So here's what you need to know in order to determine which ones that you should go with. And I actually do recommend having a variety of shampoos, which I will talk about in the end. And I keep it simple too. I think you only need two types of shampoos and I'll tell you in just a little bit. So number one, you need to ask yourself, is your hair prone to buildup? So let's get into the types of hair that typically will see more buildup compared to others. So the more buildup that you are prone to, the stronger the shampoos that you're probably going to want to pick or the more frequently that you're going to need to clarify. So your hair's texture comes into play here and texture can be a fine, medium, or coarse. This refers to the actual width of the individual strands of hair. You can have multiple textures, but to simplify it, let's stick to what you have the majority of. And people who have very fine hair are very prone to build up and it gets weighed down very easily. So if you're using a lot of products that contains things like silicones, butters, oils, emollients, things that really adhere to the hair, your hair might get very weighed down and you need to use a harsher cleanser to remove it. And you should probably be avoiding some of those ingredients overall. And porosity also comes into play here. Porosity is how well our hair can absorb and retain moisture. And our cuticle layer, which is the outermost layer of our hair, will vary based on your porosity. People who have low porosity hair have a very tightly bound cuticle and so they can get product build up very easily because everything just sits on the surface. Products don't easily absorb into the hair. Those are just some things to consider, but overall anybody can get build up with certain styling products and any porosities can also experience buildup. Some are just more prone to it than others. So the next thing you want to ask yourself are, do you use a lot of products that lead to buildup. So are you using styling products on your hair that can contribute to more buildup? Because depending on the products that you're using on your hair on wash day and even to refresh throughout the week, you might need a stronger shampoo when you go to shampoo the next time to get rid of those so that way you don't get buildup. So ingredients that adhere to the hair can build up on the hair over time, especially if you're layering them up with refreshing. So these are things like polyquats, which are ingredients that I actually love for humidity. They do a great job at sort of like waterproofing the hair, not completely, but they do create a film on the hair that helps keep the humidity out. Silicones are also used in this way where they coat the hair, they're conditioning ingredients, they do bind to the hair, especially those that are not water soluble. And then you have oils and butters, which are obviously going to repel water. And then you also have film forming humectants, which are great for moisturizing the hair, but they still create a film on the hair. These are probably the least likely to build up on the hair. And so these are gonna be so good options for moisture, but you just have to keep that in mind that they are creating that film on your hair. So these types of ingredients are ideal for our hair, especially when it comes to styling, because that's what adds shine and helps create definition and can protect our hair and keep our curls lasting longer throughout the week. And then also if you deal with humidity. So that's why I still like to use products that do create a little bit of a barrier on the hair so that way I actually like how they look and they hold up and I just have to use stronger cleansers but I'm not drying out my hair by using a bunch of sulfates and I'm still conditioning the hair afterwards so the shampoo is going to remove it all then we're going to condition so it's going to be fine so if you're someone who is prone to a lot of buildup but you don't want a shampoo that's going to strip the hair and you just need a regular everyday shampoo or not every day but one to use more frequently I would recommend something like this from Dove this is actually very affordable I wanted to make sure to include some drugs store options too. This is the Hydration Spa Shampoo. It has hyaluronic acid serum in it, so it's actually going to be hydrating and very moisturizing for the curls. 
Not every shampoo that is like with a stronger surfactant is going to be drying, which is nice. A lot of times they will combine more moisturizing ingredients in it. And this is a good example of that. So this is something that you can use more frequently. I would use it maybe once a week or so. It's not going to be full on clarifying, but it is going to effectively remove those um, ingredients from your hair that can build up. Another thing that's helpful to know is that shampoos are usually designed to work with the styling products that are also from that brand or within that line. So for a brand like Dove, a lot of their stylers contain silicones. So then you know that their shampoos are going to be definitely able to remove silicones so that way it's not going to build up on the hair or anything. So that is one thing I like to keep in mind is when I'm using products from a certain line that I know are probably going to build up, like if they have a lot of polyquats or silicones, then the next time that I shampoo my hair, I use a shampoo that is either from that line or a similar line that I know is going to remove that because hopefully brands are not formulating their shampoos to where they can't effectively remove the styling products that are also part of that line. So that's just a little tip to keep in mind. So next you'll want to consider how often you need to wash your hair. So this can vary based on a couple of factors. One being how much oil your scalp naturally produces. This is determined by our hormones and genetics and other internal factors. You can't influence the amount of oil that your body produces. So some people just naturally produce more oil. And so they're going to have more of that sebum on their scalp, which is probably going to require a stronger shampoo in order to remove it. People who have very oily scalps are also going to have to shampoo more frequently. Now, I always like to advise against shampooing every single day because that can definitely dry out your hair and can cause things like high growth fatigue, which causes permanent damage to the hair. But you also don't want to have a ton of oil building up on your scalp especially if combined with things like dry shampoos or products that contain oils and butters too. You don't want those to build up that can clog your hair follicles. So unfortunately with super oily scalps, you're going to have to shampoo a little bit more frequently. And people with dry scalps are the opposite to where you don't produce that much oil. My scalp is probably more normal to dry, but I can go seven days and I just have a little bit of sebum on my scalp, but it's not even enough to feel like I definitely need to shampoo, but my hair definitely needs to be shampooed by that point. So I usually shampoo twice a week, but my scalp is not very oily by the end of the week. So this hair type is not going to want to strip the hair too much with very strong shampoos, and you also don't need to shampoo too much. I would say two times a week, three max probably. A lot of people with very dry scalps just go one time a week with washing their hair. The other thing you might want to consider is if you're somebody who works a job where you have to shampoo your hair very frequently, like if you're in healthcare, or if you work outside and you have a lot of environmental pollutants on your hair and you need to shampoo shampoo more frequently. And then there's people like swimmers who can't help it. They just have to shampoo it more frequently. Unfortunately, that can cause some damage in your hair, but you would want to go with a more gentle shampoo. So for people who do have to shampoo their hair more frequently, like every other day, that's when I would recommend using a co-wash. I personally don't love co-washes like I mentioned because they're not that effective at fully cleansing your hair. But if I did have to shampoo very frequently or if my scalp was not really dirty, but I needed to wash my hair, this is one that I would use because this is the best co-wash that I have tried so far to where I actually do feel like I get a good cleanse out of it, but it's not as great as using a more lathering shampoo in my opinion, but this is a really great option from Curlsmith. So I wanted to recommend a shampoo that is great for those that have very oily scalps or very dry scalps. Both ends of the spectrum can use this. This is the one I mentioned earlier from AG. It's the Balance Apple Cider Vinegar Shampoo. This is still sulfate free, but it contains apple cider vinegar, which is naturally very acidic. So it's going to help to lower the cuticle and smooth the hair back down to its natural state because our hair is naturally more acidic and it doesn't love to be more on the opposite side where it's you know being harshly cleansed. So this is gonna help make it just feel soft and smooth. Apple cider vinegar is also great to balance out the scalp, whether if you're very oily or very dry, it can work for both ends. So this is a great option for those who have either one of those scalp issues going on and you can use it regularly. I also wanted to call out that I like the conditioners that go with the majority of the shampoo. So if you're wanting conditioner recommendations, I am going to make that video next, but keep in mind that for most of these, I do like the conditioners that pair with them. So the next thing that you'll want to determine is whether or not if you have hard water in your home. As I mentioned, most people do have hard water. 
especially if you're in the US, you can look it up. You can also ask your local water company. Fortunately, mine is not super hard, but I still do work in shampoos that remove hard water buildup just in case. But a lot of people do suffer from damage to their hair from hard water. It can just build up on the hair, those minerals like calcium and magnesium, and it can really affect the way our hair feels. It can feel very brittle and it feels like it has buildup on it that you just cannot get rid of. So the hair can become dry and dull. And a lot of times when people are really struggling to figure out what's wrong with their hair and nothing works, sometimes it can be from their water. And really the only fix for hard water is to get a water softener system in your home. Obviously this is only available to those that do own a home and can add one in. And obviously that is pricey, but it is the main fix for the problem because then it will fix it for your appliances and your clothes and everything else aside from just your hair. Because if not, you're just going to be fighting an uphill battle with trying to remove it and then you just get built up again. It can be a pain. I also wanted to note that shower head filters do not filter out hard water. It's not something that can be filtered out. You have to add salt in. So a water softening system actually does add salt. You have to add salt to it and that actually counteracts the hardness of the water and softens it. Now they do make shower head attachments that you can add in that are made for hard water and those you actually have to change out a salt cartridge. So keep that in mind, a regular shower filter is not gonna do the trick for hard water. Now I would recommend going with a shampoo like I mentioned from Malibu that's going to help remove hard water minerals. So the undo goo or the hard water wellness, those are going to remove those minerals and that you can just do about once a month for maintenance. I would avoid using something like this every single time you wash your hair. But when it comes to your regular shampoo, you might notice that it doesn't lather very good if you have hard water. So maybe you wanna look for a shampoo that contains some of the ingredients that do chelate, but maybe just not as much of them so it's not too harsh. Or maybe look for something like this one from AG, the um, apple cider vinegar one. That is also like a natural chelating agent. It's not quite as powerful as the ingredients like disodium EDTA, that's much more powerful and effective, but apple cider vinegar is a gentle way to maybe remove some of that. So I would say this is more compatible with hard water, but it's not gonna remove hard water buildup like once it does build up. So that's just something to keep in mind. Maybe go with a shampoo that is more compatible and then use a chelating shampoo every so often. I would avoid using something like a co-wash if you have hard water. That's definitely not gonna do the trick and can probably just make the problem worse. So the last thing you want to consider is how damaged your hair is or how high porosity your hair is. And the only thing you really need to know about this is whether or not if you should incorporate some protein in your routine. Now I don't always incorporate protein in shampoos because in my opinion it's not super effective because they rinse off. You're just applying it quickly and rinsing it off. I mean it does deposit onto your hair but it's not staying on your hair like a leave-in or a curl cream or a gel is. That's really where you can work in some protein or even in your deep conditioner where it has a lot of conditioning ingredients that are going to help deposit that protein into your hair and absorb it. So for shampoos, not a huge deal, but I would say if you are somebody with very high porosity hair that's very damaged and you do wanna work protein in, look for a shampoo that contains some protein ingredients. If you are somebody with very low porosity hair, you might be protein sensitive, so I would avoid protein in your shampoos. Another thing to call out when it comes to protein in shampoo is if you're someone that doesn't really need a ton of protein, especially if you just have healthy hair or medium porosity hair, you wouldn't really want to overdo it with protein, so that's where I would avoid it in shampoos and maybe even conditioner and just use it in like one of my stylers. I wouldn't want it in every single product in my routine because that's what can lead to protein overload is when you're including it in everything and using those same products very frequently back to back. So I wanted to shout out a couple of options for shampoos that are protein free and some that contain protein. So this is a new recommendation of mine. This has become one of my all time favorite shampoos along with that AG one that I showed. This is the Weedad Unbreakable Bonds Bond Building Shampoo. This one does contain protein, but it also has bond building technology in it. And it's also um, fragrance free, which is nice, hypoallergenic, but it's also really good at softening the hair and lowering the cuticle. This has a very low pH. So this is like the opposite of this one. If you've ever noticed that your hair feels like super squeaky clean afterwards, or it feels like it's been stripped, that's from a high pH shampoo, whereas a low pH shampoo almost feels like your hair has been conditioned. Our hair, as I mentioned, is naturally more acidic, so it really likes lower pH stuff. 
And so this is still very cleansing in my opinion, yet it makes the hair very soft. So for people with high porosity hair, definitely an option, especially with the bond building technology that's going to repair the broken bonds in your hair to help strengthen it. Also contains some protein in it and it has sodium C14-16 olefin sulfonate, which is an ingredient that actually does work to remove product buildup. But yet this is also a gentle, like regular shampoo that you can use weekly. It's not a clarifying shampoo. So that's where it gets complicated when it comes to these ingredients labels. So that's why I'm not telling you just look out for these certain ingredients because it really can vary. Not a clarifying shampoo, but it is a strengthening shampoo that is gonna make your hair very soft and moisturize as well. The conditioner is phenomenal too that goes with that. So a drugstore option would be the Not Your Mother's Bond Building Curl Talk Shampoo. Now this one's actually protein free, which is so interesting. Like it has the bond building technology, but it doesn't contain protein. It has rice amino acids, which are smaller ingredients that do absorb into the hair and they can work to strengthen the hair too. So you can still get strengthening ingredients without using strong protein. So if you're someone with low porosity hair, but your hair also needs to be strengthened, like if you're worried about breakage or if you have very fine hair, this would be a really good option to go with because you can still strengthen the hair, but not overdo it with protein. This is also very moisturizing. This has that white opaque looking color to it, so it's not super clear, so it does contain a lot of moisturizing ingredients. One more option for protein-free shampoos, this is just your everyday type of shampoo. Another drugstore option, this is the Umberto Giannini Curl Jelly Wash Curl Defining Shampoo. This is a very moisturizing shampoo. It has a really light pink white color, so it is opaque. It provides a lot of moisture, it also helps with shine, but it is very effective at cleansing the hair without having harsh sulfates. I see quite a few different surfactant ingredients and this and also a lot of conditioning ingredients. So this is your great just everyday shampoo that you could use probably up to two, maybe three times a week. So all of this to say you really only need to have two types of shampoos in your arsenal. So I recommend having a clarifying shampoo on hand and a regular shampoo. It's the regular shampoo that you'll want to look at to figure out how cleansing that one should be based on all the factors that we just talked about. But I would say the main thing to consider is the products that you're using when you're styling your hair. How much are they going to cause buildup? How prone you are to buildup? That's gonna determine how strong your regular shampoo will be. So I hope that helps to kind of summarize everything. So one of the best tips that I can give you for how to find the right shampoo is to use the shop page on my blog, which is all of the products that I have tried before. So this is not like a complete database by any means, but there are a lot of products on here, I think over 300 or so, of products that I have tried and ones that I recommend. So if you wanna know what shampoos I recommend, Check that out and then you can use the filters on my blog to filter down to exactly what you need. So the filters that I recommend for shampoos include whether or not if it contains protein. So you can look for protein ones. If you have damaged hair, look for protein free if you have low porosity hair. And then I would also look at the chelating filters. So if you do need to find a shampoo with chelating ingredients for hard water, you can use those. I don't have filters on there for like lather level. Pretty much the majority of the shampoos that I recommend are going to have a pretty good lather with the exception of the super low poo ones that I recommended or the co-washes, those are definitely gonna be more mild. But for the most part, I really like a shampoo with more lather. So I don't have that filter on there, but let me know if that's something you would want me to add because I could certainly do that and just label it based on the lather level. But it's gonna vary so much based on how much product buildup that you have on your hair and also how hard your water is. Like people are going to get different lather levels, but for the most part, I really like a high lathering shampoo, so that's what a lot of those are. So all of these products that I recommended, I will have linked in the description box down below. You just expand the bar that's right below at the video's title and you will see all of those links. And if you need some more help picking products based on your curl type, check out the video that I just posted recently where I picked styling products for my followers based on their hair's texture and porosity that they submitted. I will have that video linked right here on the screen. There's lots of recommendations in there and I include every single combination of porosity and texture. So I will talk to you over in that video. Bye everyone.